here, at the intersection of too much and not enough streets, hustling for my worthiness. This is my old hood, a little town called Lord, Please Love Me, where the air reeks of desperation, where the homeless beg for love instead of food, and the fat rats, they feast on discarded broken hearts. In this town, the population is counted by halves, because of course only someone else can complete you. In this town, there's only one restaurant, an all-you-can-eat buffet serving guilt, shame, and martyrdom, where no matter how much you stuff your face, baby, you're guaranteed to leave hungry. And in this town, there's only one lesson taught in the classroom, that your value comes from out there. And you graduate the day you master the art of people pleasing. And as the former mayor of this town, maybe that was my claim to fame. See, I grew up right around the corner here on 121 Daddy Come Home Street. You could drive by most Sundays and see me in the doorway with my nose pressed to the glass window, six years old, eight, ten, waiting for him. Be ready at noon, he would say, as though time meant anything to him. I'd spend the morning primping myself like a woman does on a first date. What started off as pigtails would evolve into hair tees, just so. Hey, don't judge, it was the 80s, y'all. <laughs> the house would smell of homemade chocolate chip cookies, because those were his favorite. And I'd wrap them up to keep them warm, thinking, oh, he is going to love me. Uh, I mean, he's going to love them, the cookies, right? And I'd stand at that door, waiting. I remember the cruel ticking of the clock. I remember my mother gently pulling me away from the door and peeling off my coat and making me hot chocolate with marshmallows to sweeten the bitterness of his absence. I stood at that door for much of my youth. And at 26 years old, all dolled up in my wedding day, I sat at the back of a stretch limousine my nose once again pressed to the closed glass window, waiting for him to show up to walk me down the aisle. This time, there was no hot chocolate, just the bitterness. I quickly learned to displace his love with any that I could find. See, I would barter my grades for attention. I would prostitute my opinion for scraps of love. But as y'all know, you can't get full on scraps. Now I'm going to tell you, I don't stand here as a victim. In my life, I have been loved in so many ways. I mean, that's what you all want to hear, isn't it? All the ways that someone else can soothe and comfort and fix it. Well, I apologize in advance. I have a soul contract in this lifetime to speak my truth. To use my voice to rattle the bones of comfort and complacency. See, I didn't come tonight, y'all, to link arms and sing you kumbaya. I came tonight to tell you the truth. What it's really like on the other side of a 20-year marriage. What it's really like on the other side of two perfect children. What it's really like on the other side of a gorgeous house on the other side of a viral video leading a world movement, a global tour, a TED talk, a book deal, hundreds of I love you Gina messages a day and throw in a partridge in a pear tree. I'm here to tell you that it is never enough. I'm here to tell you that the ultimate connection is connection to yourself. Do you ever try to love someone who couldn't receive it? Ever have someone try to give you something you didn't feel worthy of having? Nobody can fix you if there's a hole in your self-worth. And you know, if I could, if I could talk to that six-year-old girl, I would hold her little face in my hands and I'd say, baby, he's not coming. Nobody is coming to save you. And you know, that's the good news. Worthiness isn't out there to get, it's in here to claim. It's our birthright. 
And I love this thought, without apology to the romantics and the Hollywood movies and all of you searching for your twin flame. I love knowing that the journey to loving myself is the ultimate love affair of my life. I love knowing that I can be my own shot of whiskey instead of everybody's cup of tea. And you know, when I really know this, everything in my world becomes dewy and sparkly. And yes, unicorns fly by, farting rainbows, you should see them. But this state of mind, y'all, it's an inside job. And if you aren't there, haven't been there, forgotten how to get there, hop in, Thelma, let's get the hell out of this town. Because the journey to loving yourself is never about going, it's about returning, isn't it? <coughs> My self-love is provocative. And what I've learned in the past six months on this journey is that it scares people. Heck, it scares me. Who the hell am I to love this flawed mystery, laden with sin and scars and scandal? Nobody knows my faults as well as I do. But here's what I've also come to know. That no matter what I've done or haven't done, no matter what I've achieved or failed at, no matter who loves me and who doesn't, we're worthy. You're worthy. I am worthy. Simply because, baby, I was here. And nobody's coming to save me. And that's the good news. Thank you.